Our theme this month is change one thing, change everything. The greatest gift that you can give yourself, why not give it to yourself this year? It's the gift of a new start and a new year. Who else loves a brand new year? Some people are jaded and cynical and, and don't want to try anymore, but I love the idea of a fresh start. And it begins with one habit, not 20, not 100, not 1,000, not changing everything that you can think of about yourself. The temptation in the coming days is going to be to dream of changing everything about yourself by changing everything in your life all at once, right? Is that just me? How has that worked in the past? So this year, this year we're just going to say no to the insanity, and we're going to take a scientific approach. Now, scientists at MIT, MIT, that's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, for those who don't know, and other major universities have identified within the brain a habit loop. And this governs both good and bad habits. And this is what that habit loop looks like. There's a cue, and in response to that cue, you swing into a routine, in other words, your habit, a set of behaviors or thought patterns or emotions, but it's, kind of, it's your habit. And you do it over and over again because there's a reward. Remember the greatest management principle in the world? Behavior that gets rewarded gets repeated. And only behavior that gets rewarded gets repeated. And the rewards have to be rewarding to you. I just had this conversation with my kids the other day. I'm the only person in my life whose love language is gifts. And so I love buying people presents and no one feels loved. Because to me, a gift is like the greatest thing you could ever give me. But not everybody feels that way. Other people like quality time or, or physical touch or acts of service or whatever. So your reward has to be rewarding to you. And a lot of the rewards are emotions. But anyway, once that reward kicks in, then as soon as you see the cue, you actually begin craving the reward. And that's what drives the routine or the habit. But I'm getting a little bit ahead. So here's the habit loop. Here's the cue. It's the urge to indulge the habit. The routine is then the automatic way that that habit or pattern unfolds. And then the reward is the craving that that routine satisfies. And that craving might be for comfort, cope, escape, companionship, dopamine, the sense of feeling full. But there's, there's some sense in which you're getting a payoff. And that's why you keep doing it over and over again. Now, the secret to change is changing only one part of the loop. The cue and the reward must remain the same. And this might be a missing piece for some of us. I, I think it might be a, a missing piece for me. And I've encouraged you to, to be really proactive in thinking about the rewards you want to give yourself the rewards that you believe will motivate and inspire you. And if the new habit is stuck, then you've been effective at it. But if the new habit you want to introduce hasn't stuck, it's because you have not identified the right reward. And I think this might be a missing piece for a lot of us, myself included. And so this is kind of where we're going to focus this month. A lot of these principles we've covered before, but we're, we're doing a more scientific approach not to guess at what reward you might like to receive that might motivate you, but to actually examine and analyze yourself to discover the reward that you're already experiencing that really does motivate you. And that's why you keep repeating the old pattern. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that, and I think it's going to be really powerful. Again, here's the key. You only want to change 
the routine. And I think some of us, myself included, have been trying to change, maybe trying to change the cue and the routine and the reward, and it just is too much. It overwhelms the system. We're going to focus this month in identifying what's already driving our behavior. So I think it's going to be really a fun little project. You're going to be your own scientist. If you'll pardon the pun with, you know, Christmas cookies. <laughs> How many of you have cookie? Be honest, you have cookie cutter surrounding you. Cookie cutter solutions won't work. Your habits are very personal. Even if, even if they appear to look just like someone else's, your rewards are customized and they're already in place. And until you understand the why behind your habits, you'll never change the what. Bad habits are replaced, not eliminated. And by the same token, new habits cannot be manufactured out of thin air and hope to succeed. If we want a new habit, replace a bad habit and put it right smack dab in the middle of the already existing loop that's playing out in your life over and over and over again. I hope this is turning on light bulbs for somebody because I'll tell you, it was a real revelation for me. Identifying, we've talked about this before, what's your kind of lead domino? That one habit that if you change that, it would have the most potential to change other areas of your life for the better. A lead domino or Charles Duhigg, which as you can tell, I've just studied this book. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with it, The Power of Habit. He calls it a keystone habit. It alters the way you see yourself. And we've talked a lot about that in becoming the woman I want to be, the importance of getting a new image of you know who you can become. He talks more about altering the way you see yourself by showing up in a new way. Like, for example, just a small thing, getting up first thing in the morning, getting dressed, putting on your workout outfit. And we've talked about that as well in the 90-day renewal. And maybe we'll do that as a challenge one month. Dress like the woman you want to show up like. And I've done this with some of you who've won the Total Transformation Contest We've walked through that together in a one-on-one -on -one way. You know, who are you at your very best? What do you look like? What are you wearing? How is your hair? Is it on top of your head in a ponytail and you're in your pajamas? Is that you at your very best? If not, don't show up like that and expect to be your best. Anyway, that was a little bit of a tiny bit of a tangent there. And he says that exercise is actually an ideal choice. Research shows that people who begin exercising early in the morning change in numerous other ways, even without a conscious intention to change those other areas. Early exercisers began to eat healthier. They spent less money. They got into less credit card debt. They stopped procrastinating. They, they showed improved job performance. As I mentioned, their self-image changed. They began to see themselves as a together person because they got up, got going, got their workout done. They're like, wow. They got home, got in the shower, looked in the mirror and thought, oh my, it's seven o'clock. I've already done the one thing I've been avoiding for the last decade. Wow, I'm a rock star. And they began seeing themselves differently. And as a result, began behaving differently. So, Honestly, I'm thinking, you know, you can pick whatever you want. And we've got these new uh, focus groups that Rennie has put together. But think about whichever habit you want to change. Maybe just maybe make it one that you do first thing in the morning. And, and make sure it's one that's going to change the way you see yourself. If you want to see yourself as a spiritual, worshipful woman, make sure that first thing that you do is an hour of worshiping God. I'm looking at Lauren with, with banners and, you know, yeah, that's exercise and worship all in one. You're seeing yourself as a godly on the move woman. So again, I'm getting a tiny bit ahead here. Some key factors here. Again, your self-image is changed. That's the kind of habit you want to pick. 
and one that strengthened the willpower muscle. We've talked extensively about how willpower is a muscle and it depletes throughout the day, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be exercising your willpower muscle. Exercise it every day. And I wanna challenge you to begin thinking as we wrap up December, show yourself in the coming year that you can do one hard thing and then other things are going to become easier to change. Again, prove to yourself, preferably first thing every day, that you can do one hard thing. And by doing that every day without fail, you every day are strengthening that willpower muscle. You are getting stronger. This, the science is behind it. That muscle gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, your willpower muscle. And suddenly you're saying no to credit card debt and you're saying no to chocolate chip cookies and you're saying no to a Netflix binge. You're saying no, 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 no. It gets easier and easier to say no to things because you're saying yes to one hard thing that changes the way you see yourself. This is really powerful stuff. This helping somebody? I'm read, I, I can see your comments. So. <laughs> Feel free to chime in with your comments. Again, do one hard thing consistently. This is really key. Write this down and save this screen. Do that one hard thing consistently. And in the way you have chosen through advanced planning and thoughtful consideration of the obstacles you are likely to encounter. And they give the example of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, in any 12-step program. This is the key to success in it. Alcoholics Anonymous, without even knowing the science, I mean, just an impartation from God, help to, you know, what, what usually drives you to drink? What's the cue? And what's the payoff? How do you feel after you've had the drink? What's that emotion that you're looking for? What's that experience that, that it gives you? That, what's the payoff? And then they plan in advance what they're going to do proactively rather than drinking. And thinking about what are the obstacles that I'm likely to face as I do this one new hard thing, which is not drink. Have a glass of water instead of a vodka. And, and all of the components that you're seeing on the screen, all of them are key. Picking that one hard thing that you're going to do first thing in the morning that's going to change the way you see yourself. But you've got to do it in a way that you've chosen. This can't be forced down your throat. You need to be creative and, and make your own decisions. You need to have a sense of ownership over this and control. Because if you feel like someone else is forcing you, that's why you can never put anyone else in rehab. It doesn't work. They have to choose it for themselves. And you have to choose it for yourself. We can hold you accountable. <clears throat> we can encourage you, equip you, train you, pray for you, prophesy over you. But you have to have a sense of free will and control over this. It's critical. And then advanced planning, and I'm going to kind of walk you through that process and thinking through, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make sure I'm going to do it? What's the when, where, how, what, where for? And really being honest and realistic, what, what are some of those obstacles? You know, you're going to get up at 5 a.m. and you're going to be a writer. That's it. What are the obstacles? You're like, well, it's cold. Okay, we'll get a space heater. I don't know. Be thinking about what's that one habit? And hello, one habit only. Uh-oh. Donna, I want to change everything. It's a new year. I know. What I'm telling you is that you will change everything. We, we've had this conversation, remember? <laughs> change one thing, change everything. Because the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So change how you do one thing. We're back to that, that one thing principle. Pick one habit and one habit only that you want to change. Are you with me? Does anybody have any idea already of what that habit needs to be? 
Again, choose a habit that empowers you to see yourself as the woman you want to be. Now you're ready for the research phase. Okay, here we go. Phase one is the cue. We're going to start by the cue. Identify the internal urge and or the external stimulus that drives the loop. And honestly, it could be something as simple as hearing your alarm go off. And, and that's your cue to hit the snooze button because you like the comfort and the escape of curling back under the covers and getting a little bit more sleep. You just want to comfort yourself. It could be just that simple. I'll say more about it. Finding your cue. Okay, so these are some of the things that you're going to look for. What time is it? Okay, so we're, we're thinking right now about that bad habit that you want to replace, right? So what's the bad habit that you want to replace? And again, you can feel free to engage with me. The bad habit I want to replace is waking up late and hitting the snooze button over and over again rather than getting up an hour earlier so that I can uh, work out at the gym or getting up an hour earlier so I can worship with my flags and dance and get exercise and worship and everything all at once or getting up an hour earlier to really spend time in the word and pray and see myself as a woman of God or getting up an hour earlier to write because I see myself as an author but yet somehow mysteriously the book never gets written. Okay, so what is that, or maybe that bad habit is you come home after work or after school and you walk in the door and rather than changing into your workout outfit and going to exercise at that point, you turn on the television and next thing you know, it's time to go to bed because you've done nothing but Netflix binge and eat out of the refrigerator. Or maybe your bad habit is overeating or snacking or binging or smoking or drinking or internet surfing, whatever that bad habit is that you want to replace with that new life transforming habit. And I'm encouraging you to think of first thing in the morning, but it could be anything. What time is it? Where are you? If it's overeating, are you at the work cafeteria, or are you alone in your car? Be honest. You alone in your car? Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Who else, if anyone, is around? Do you enjoy, maybe, you're, maybe your habit is gossip. I don't know what, what that worst habit is. Or, or do you do your worst habit when you're alone? A lot of people, you know. Some people drink in bars. And their cue is driving past their favorite bar at night. They drive past it, they got to drive in. And being around their drinking buddies, that's when they drink. Other people only drink alone. I didn't know I'm giving alcohol. It's just an a, a example. What did you just do? Like before your, your habit, what did you just do before that? Did you just walk into the kitchen? Did you just get into your car? Did you just get out of your car? Did you just pick up the phone? Uh-oh, that's for a lot of you. All you did was pick up your smartphone. <laughs> all you did was pick up your iPad. Next thing you know, two hours later, all you've done is scroll through Instagram feed. That, that's one for some of you. All you did was pick up your phone. That's what you did. You just picked up your phone to check the notification. And next thing you know, three hours have passed. And what have you done? Nothing but mindless surfing. Okay. I mean, I'm just giving an example. Are these helping somebody? What emotion are you feeling at the moment of the cue? Boredom, loneliness, frustration. What emotion are you feeling? Now, answer all five of these questions every time that one specific habit occurs for a week. This is the science. And no one's going to start a new habit <laughs> before the year ends, realistically. <laughs> so I want you to do, as this the rest of this year unfolds, is just be the scientist 
Okay, just be analyzing. And the holidays are a great time for our worst habits to rear their ugly heads. Because there's a lot of stress and emotions. So I would like you to spend the next week or the rest of this year really being mindful and, and gaining insight into the current habit you have, the one that you want to replace. This, is this clear to everybody, what we're doing? And then answer all five questions. You write it out on an index card or something like that. And then notice which one is consistent or most influential. Is everyone clear about what they were? What time is it? When you, you know, when you engage in this habit, what, note it down every time. What time is it? Is it late at night? Is it early in the morning? Is it midday? Where are you? Are you in bed? Are you on the couch? Are you in your office? Are you in your car? Who else, if anyone, is around? My guess is a lot of us, our worst habits are when we're alone. I don't know. It's just a theory. What did you just do right before that habit rolled? And then what emotion are you feeling? Wonder how many of us are just feeling bored, lonely. Okay. That's your number one cue. Whether it's the time of day, you know, some people always have cookies after at nine o'clock at night. Like you do great all day long. This was me. I do great all day long. And then around nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, I'm bored, meander into the kitchen. And next thing you know, I'm like in the pantry. Mm -hmm. That's not just me, right? Okay, so now you're clear about what the cue is when this habit rolls out and you're kind of getting a sense of the where and the why. Now we're going to think about the reward. What is the reward? And I think this is something that maybe we've been missing here at RLC because we, we've talked about the love languages and, you know, how to be proactive about rewarding yourself and all that the Bible says about celebrate. And I think I've done a really good job teaching that, but I think that we have a little missing piece here that, that when we bring it in, it's going to be a game changer for some of you. And that's really giving attention to what the reward you're already giving yourself. The what reward's already working. What craving is being satisfied? And, and maybe we've talked a little bit about that. We've said, you know, if there's a behavior that keeps repeating, surely it's being rewarded somehow. And, you know, kind of look at that. But I don't, we've never done this in a really super focused way. Like I want us to do right now for the rest of December. Tired, stressed. It's my way to unwind. What's the reward? I feel like I'm unwinding. I feel like I'm disconnecting from the stresses of the day. And escape, in other words. It's a way to escape. I do think a lot of them come back to companionship, connection, comfort, cope, and escape. I honestly, I think we boil them down. A lot of them will come back to that. But you just be creative and, and, and ask Holy Spirit to lead you in this process. What craving is being satisfied? Again, the reward in the loop is a satisfied craving. Whether that craving is to buy something new or that craving is to feel the buzz of a glass of wine or that reward is to feel connected to your fellow human beings, that reward is to feel like you've been heard, so you've got to go comment and thumbs up. Do you feel like you've been affirmed? So you go to check to see who thumbs up to you that day? What craving do you suspect your habit satisfying? Just kind of think about it. And again, feel free to engage with me on this. And then experiment to identify it. And th this is a key thing. And some people actually add this as the fourth thing in the habit loop. After the cue, they put anticipation. You've got the cue. You immediately anticipate that reward that's going to come after you run the habit. 
and then get the reward. Anticipation could almost be like a fourth piece of this puzzle. There's a lot of truth to that. Cue anticipation. Run the play. Then get the reward that you are anticipating. A lot of truth to that. Anticipating the reward is a driving force behind the power of your response to the cue. And this is why kind of maybe artificial rewards that you've thought of in the past haven't really worked. You're like, I'm going to go on a cruise vacation. And, and for some of you that worked, others it didn't work. Even if it was a huge reward, it didn't work. Because anticipation wasn't strong enough. Mm, interesting. Okay, so be, be thinking about that. I'll say more about it in a minute. And then the third piece is the routine. That, that's the habit. That's the behavior that keeps repeating. And again, you've got the old one that you want to really identify, analyze, understand, so that as we go into the new year, you're ready to replace it with the new routine, the new behavior, okay? what you routinely do. Now, again, this is the habit that you want to change. It's easier to change an old habit than create a new one. So think substitution or instead of, okay? So instead of going into the kitchen and going into the pantry and opening a bag of chips, instead of that, I'm going to do what? Okay. The next time, this is, this is the scientific part of this. The next time you experience the cue, <clears throat> wake up, feel hungry, walk in the front or whatever. Try the new routine. Test it out. Let's say, say instead of walking into my house and going into the kitchen and staring into the pantry, I'm going to walk in the front door, go directly to my bedroom, change into my workout clothes and go outside and walk. Okay. So that, that, that'll be like the substitution. Try it. Set a timer uh, you know, I think the easiest is your phone, right? Your phone is always attached to you or the kitchen clock, whichever, for 15 minutes later. Or if you're going to go for, you know, or if you're going to go for a walk for an hour, set it for an hour and 15 minutes later. And then here's the key, analyze, did it work? When the timer rings, Notice if the suspected craving has been satisfied. Let me, let me use one of you as an example. So Lauren said, when I'm tired and stressed, I pick up my phone and I, I play on my phone for an hour to unwind. And that's a, that's a bad habit I want to change. And she says, instead, I want to go to my prayer room and soak and put a neck massager on with, with heat. So the next time she feels that cue, and I, I would look at what's the cue, what, what's the cue that you're feeling tired and stressed? Maybe it's just walking in the front door. Like as soon as you come in the front, after, or right after dinner, you're like, I'm tired, stressed. I've done everything I can do today. Okay. Then go to your prayer room, and if you're going to be there a half hour, set the timer right then and there for 45 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to spend a half hour in my prayer room instead of playing on my phone. Or an hour. I'm sorry, you said an hour. Okay, yep, yeah, that's what I thought so. She says, coming home from work. So she comes home from work and picks up the phone and sits and mindlessly scrolls to the phone for an hour. So instead, she's going to go to her prayer room for an hour because she thinks that what she's craving, what she's anticipating is, is an escape. She's going to escape all the listening to people's problems all day as a psychologist. So set the timer for an hour and 15 minutes. Spend an hour in the prayer room. And then 15 minutes later, when that alarm rings, ask yourself, do I still, listen, do I still feel the urge to pick up my phone and escape for an hour? If you still feel the urge to pick up the phone and escape for an hour, then it didn't work. The craving wasn't satisfied. The prayer time is not a workable substitute and it won't last. Did you get that? 
So, so it's possible that you're, you're craving something else. You think you're craving to escape, but you're craving something else. That time in the prayer room and the neck warmer couldn't satisfy in the same way. So it's not going to work. So you kind of go back to the drawing board and you can try a, a deeper analysis of what it is that you're craving or trying something else to satisfy that same craving. Does this make sense? That's why I'm saying we're, we're going to have to be scientists and, re and really understand what drives us because some of us have been trying to conquer a bad habit for like as long as we've been together. And we've made progress in some areas, but there's still that one habit that you would love to overcome. And if you could overcome it, it would be such a game changer. Sugar. Just, I'm still addicted to sugar after all of this. I have to do some deeper work here. Is this helping? Making sense? Now, here's, here's one more piece. Coming back to Lauren, we're using her as an example. <clears throat> When that alarm rings, write down the first three words that come to mind when you consider how you're feeling. Is that how you want to feel? Because all, 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 listen, all, all these habits, they really come down to anesthetizing <laughs> the, you know, something. It, it's a feeling we're trying to get. So notice how you're feeling. It's really deep stuff here. Do this in response to the cue over and over again until you see the clear pattern. It, eventually, it's going to make sense to you. Keep testing until you find something healthy, something productive that really does satisfy whatever that real deepest craving is. And I think, again, this is where we're going to need the Holy Spirit to really help us. Holy Spirit, what am I hungry for? Holy, right now, let's do this right now. Holy Spirit, what am I craving? Approval, acceptance, comfort, connection, disconnection. What am I craving? What's driving this negative habit? And would you show me a holy substitution? So we're, what we're trying to do is, is, is take the guesswork out. If you're still craving that cookie, the couch, your favorite Netflix show, then you haven't found something that really satisfies that craving or you're still, you're still not right about what the craving actually is. It's one of those two things. And it's, it's not going to work. I don't care if you promise yourself a cruise vacation. It's not going to work. Mm. Yeah, this is, this is big for me too. Thank you. <laughs> this is helping me too. Because I've got one dumb habit, and all of you know what it is. I can't break it. I haven't been able to break it so far. And I think that's, this is what it is. I need a deeper revelation of what's driving it. Again, habit's not going to stick until you put it together. Yeah. If you're wrong about what you're really craving, or you haven't found a satisfactory new routine that satisfies, what's the craving? Continue experimenting. And I think that the big revelation for me is not guessing at what I think will motivate me in the future but actually gain, getting a revelation, Holy Spirit revelation of what's already motivating me. That's, that, that's the key here. And then he talks about the importance of, of having an if-then an if then plan, okay? Harnessing the power of what he calls implementation intentions. Decide in advance what you're going to do. Again, coming back to the Alcoholics Anonymous. They don't wait till they're driving past the bar. They create a plan. And whether your addiction is sugar 
or the snooze button or Instagram or Facebook or gossip or whatever it is, you need to be proactive in deciding in advance what you're going to do when you are tempted and, and take it seriously because it's, it's the one thing standing in between you and the woman that you really want to be. Starbucks revolutionized how and where people drink coffee by training their employees to brainstorm if-then scenarios to perfect customer service. Brainstorm. This is what they do. They're very big on developing willpower in their employees. And this is a key way that they do it. They encourage them, brainstorm if then. Think in advance what's going to tempt you to show up late for work. What's going to tempt you to lose your patience with an employer, with a, with a, with a fellow employee or with a customer? What are those things that are going to bring out the worst in you? So know yourself. And then brainstorm, well, if that happens, that thing that tends to bring out the worst in me, what specifically am I going to do? And then write out the plan. And that's why their customer service is, is so exceptional. And science shows that you can change your life using the same approach. Create a detailed written plan for how you will respond to the specific types of situation that usually cause you to repeat the negative habit loop. Write it out. What will you do when you pick up your phone? If, that, if that's what begins your habit of mindless internet surfing. What will you do when the alarm bell rings? What will you do when your husband walks out the door in the morning, having just had breakfast? Written detailed plan of what you're going to do. What are you going to do when you walk in the door at night and you want to unwind from the day? Detailed written plan. If this happens, then that. If my husband turns on the TV, then I'm going to do that. If my Twitter dings, then I'm going to do that. Have a detailed plan. You usually hit the snooze button. What will you do when the alarm rings? Put it in writing and commit to it. You eat mindlessly after work. What will you do when you walk through the front door? Have a plan. You typically surf the internet until well past your designated bedtime. Who else? Come on. What will you do when you climb under the covers? Where will you leave the phone? How many of you need to get an old school alarm clock and stop using your electronic device as your alarm? If it's a, if it's a, a stumbling block, if it's like your glass of vodka, then don't have it by your bed, last thing and first thing, Okay. So if, you're, if your phone or your iPad or your laptop is your downfall, then you need to have a plan. Okay, I'm going to get an old school alarm and I'm going to put that in my bedroom and I'm going to buy a box that has a lock and key and at this time of day, I'm going to lock up my phone and that's it. I know that sounds a little extreme, but in any way. You can certainly leave it in the bathroom or leave it downstairs. You sleepwalk through the morning instead of working out like you keep promising yourself you're going to do every New Year's Eve. Okay, so what will you do first thing every morning? Written plan. And if this goes wrong, then what will you do? What are some things that could get in the way? You walk into the office and then rather than getting to work, you check your email, which leads from email to Facebook, to Facebook, to Instagram. Next thing you know, it's 10, 15, and it's time for your morning break, and you really haven't done anything. Uh-oh. Make a list of the cues that trigger the one habit you want to change and write out a specific plan to respond differently to each one in a new way. Make smart use of your smartphone with prompts, alarms, apps, etc. If you always eat junk food in the evening, set an alarm for 7 p.m. with a motivational message and a reminder to run a new routine that might that really should probably conclude with brushing, brushing your teeth, right? Okay, 7 o'clock motivational message, time to 
run around the block. Okay, seven o'clock, take a walk around the block, come home, brush your teeth, take a shower, do something. And then state your intention. And I will give you this as a template. When I walk through the front door, hear my snoo hear my alarm, walk into the office, pick up my phone. I will, what's the new routine? Okay, so when I pick up my phone, I will open to the version app and read my Bible first thing because it provides me with a sense of being in the know and feeling connected. It gives me mental stimulation. What's that healthy new way to experience that reward or satisfy that craving? Again, it's going to take some work on your part. Lauren suggesting having a hot cup of herbal tea is a great after dinner snack uh, or, you know, tradition to curb snacking. That's a great one. Some of you should try that. So you're going to have a cup at seven o'clock. The alarm rings. It gives you a motivational message. You have a cup of herb tea. You brush your teeth and that's it. You're done for the day. I gave you some examples. When I hear my alarm, I will immediately put on my sneakers, lace them, grab my water bottle, and head out the door for a brisk walk because it provides me with comfort knowing the most important thing I need to do all day is behind me before I go to work. Just an example. And you could do this for your New Year's intentions. This year, when I walk through the door at night, I will go directly to my prayer room, in order to unwind and escape the cares of the day. Give them to God. Take them off my shoulders and put them on his. You know, I gave this illustration. I was praying. I'm going to give this to Lauren. I was praying over a young man in Guatemala. And I'll, I'll kind of give you the story. He was born to a fam very you know, successful family. And they own a, a spectacular hotel. That's at least one of their businesses. And their oldest son was just handsome, accomplished, successful, wonderful, everything. Um, and he went out to dinner one night. And there, maybe there's more of the story, but he choked to death at the restaurant. In his like, he was only I think 21. And uh, not long after that, the father had a stroke, and now he's in a wheelchair. And it's just the family has been through so much trauma. And now. This young man is, you know, running the hotel, caring for his mother, caring for his father, helping them, you know, trying to make up for the loss of their other son by being super son. And as I was leaving, they asked me if I would pray over each of the family members. And I went to him and I said, you know, we have an expression in the United States. I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I, I, I feel like you, you feel that way that you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And I want you to, I want you to picture something in your mind. You know, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. And so a yoke is like a, 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 um, a two piece, uh, like shoulder harness, you know, that half is on you, half is on, you know, the animal next to you. And in this case, person next to you. So picture you and Jesus side by side, and then picture him up on his tiptoes. <laughs> so, so he's always, taller than you so that even you're still you're side by side and both of you are kind of carrying the load because he's taller than you and has broader shoulders than you really all of it he really all the weight is on him so i want you like each day to kind of stand you know picture jesus standing up on his toes and taking all that weight up off of your shoulders as you stay by, side by side with him all day and I think that this might be a, for, for a lot of you who feel like, you know, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And that's why you need to comfort and cope and escape. You know, maybe when you come home from work each day, you know, picture Jesus, you know, maybe get up on your toes and then get down and like, no matter how high up on your toes are, he's still taller than you. And just kind of see him maybe even doing that, standing up on his toes and lifting it up off your shoulders and say, you know, Jesus, I'm just... I'm here beside you and I'm still going through the motions of doing this work, but you're, you're taking all the weight onto your shoulders. So some of you can maybe picture yourself doing that.
Maybe that helps somebody. Because I think that's why we run some of these destructive habits. We're like, I just, I need to just escape here for a minute. And then I want to share some uh, success boosters, just kind of other little factors that increase success. And then I'm going to try to do a direct camera. Stay with me. Um, just other factors that will increase your, is this helping somebody? Is anybody getting ideas? Feel free to brainstorm here, right here, right now. You, know, you can think right on your laptop or phone or whatever. Other factors that increase success. You know, I'm into this easy as ABC, right? I did, I did Jackson 5. I did this last month for something. ABC, so A is accountability. You know, find someone to partner with you. Find someone who has the same goal. Find a group to partner with. Be honest with each other. Check in with each other every day. Get, you know, Facebook Messenger lets you call each other and video chat and phone chat and text chat. Check in with each other. B is believe, just, you know, believe you can and you're halfway there. Begin to visualize yourself successfully carrying out this new behavior. C is consistency. This is critical. Respond to the same cue, the same way, every time. And that's why I think it's good to have a daily, 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 every day. I think daily is better than once a week or three times a week. It's but it, you you know ask Holy Spirit what's going to work for you. But consistency, the exact same place, the exact same time, the exact same way every time without fail. And then D is discover your best cues. We're going to come back to remember we talked about how analyzing what the cues are. Time. Put the cues. You know, in your favor. Time. Always do X. At the same time, when you wake up, at lunch, after work, before bed, tie it to the time. Date every Monday, every Sunday, the first day of every month, every morning, every evening. And then every, you know, specific date, every day, every Monday, whatever it is. Location, certain spaces, trigger routines, standing in the kitchen, walking past the television, entering the gym, getting in your car, picking up your phone. Let that be a cue for you. New habits are easier to perform in new locations, according to Duke University. So that is one reason why, you know, there's an English proverb, a change is as good as a rest. You know, so mix things up a little bit. Go to a new location. I mean, there's something to be said for that. Join a new group. Get a group together in your local community. Might rearranging the furniture change the feeling in your home and therefore your response to it? I know some of you need to do some, uh, you know, rearranging in your household. Preceding events or habit stacking. Again, I did a whole teaching on habit stacking a couple months back. Think of things you already do as a matter of established routine, then add the new habit to a well-established one. And that's what's going to happen. You know, we're focusing right now just on that one habit, but once it's well-established, then you can stack on additional habits. Think in terms of building many small habits one at a time, and you'll have more success with one exception, which I talked about. And that is that one hard thing. Emotional states. When I feel what? When I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders, I will run to Jesus instead of picking up my phone. I will pick up my Bible instead of going into the kitchen. When I feel lonely, I will take a walk to the park and strike up a conversation with somebody instead of going to the drive-thru and getting some french fries. Think about your emotional states and how you respond. Depression, boredom, loneliness, these are all common cues for bad habits. Understanding which emotional states cue up your undesired behaviors, along with how you seek relief, that can unlock the door to victory for a lot of you. And then people. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, according to Jim Rohn, and a lot of science back set up. Who are you with when you indulge your negative habits? Again, some of you are at the office. Some of you, some of you, you're 
negative habit is gossiping at church or some of you, your worst habit is complaining. Uh Uh-oh. Whoa, she didn't mention that one yet. And it's when your husband walks through the door or your kids or your friends, quote, when, or some of you are alone. I covered that already. This is what the Bible says. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And then E, A, B, C, D, E, it's easier. It's easy. Easy is easier than hard. Make it easy to do the right thing and hard to do the wrong thing. Set yourself up for success. And you've all heard this. If you're trying to go on a diet, get rid of all the junk food and buy healthy food and do salads in a jar and soups in a jar and pre-cut vegetables. Set schedules. This is the last point I want to make because this is really big. Set schedules rather than just a deadline. Let me show you this. This is going to be really big for some of you. A deadline. I will lose 15 pounds this year. Schedule, I will walk briskly for 60 minutes every morning at 7 a.m. no matter the weather. See the difference? One is about an outcome, which outcome goals are great, but how many of you have made that goal every year for the last 20 years and it never happened? Because more important, even than a deadline, is a schedule. Because if you walk briskly for 60 minutes every morning at 7 a.m. no matter the weather, and you need to lose 15 pounds, you probably will. Because as I said earlier, when you do one hard thing, you build willpower muscle by doing it consistently. And science proves that increased willpower muscle will enable you to begin eating better and stop driving up your credit card debt and stop procrastinating and work harder and work smarter. And it begins to show up in every other area of your life. Easy is easier than hard. So make it easy on yourself by scheduling the activity and letting the outcome kind of unfold as a, as a, as a matter of course. Watch this. I'm going to give you a few more. These are really good. Somebody's going to get a revelation right here. I will write a book by July 15th. Now that's good. And you can even think of a reward. And I'll go to China. How many of you know, set that deadline before and had lofty go- even rewards in mind that you never obtained? Okay, how about a schedule? I will write 500 plus words every day at 5 a.m. in my home office before the rest of the family awakes. Because I have a feeling if you got up every day at 5 a.m. and wrote at least 500 words, say, I'm going to write for one hour and a minimum of 500 words, maybe more. I'm going to sit there for an hour and I'm going to write. And if it takes me more than an hour, I'm going to get 500 words on that page before anybody else wakes up. And I guarantee if you do that, by July 15th, you'll have the book. I'll give you one more. I will declutter my house this year. Woohoo! And when I do, I'm going to go away with friends. How about this? I will declutter every night for 30 minutes. Immediately after dinner, instead of surfing on my phone or Netflix, every night for 30 minutes from 7 to 7.30, I'm going to set an alarm on my clock, on my my phone, 7 to 7.30. Instead of watching TV, that's the bad habit I'm trying to break. I'm going to declutter for 30 minutes. I guarantee if you do that every night consistently by December, your house will be decluttered. 